gonna be hard to do one look. <laughs> like on each thing, there's so many to look at. just has a really good mix of sort of all the things we've got throughout the collection uh, which is always a fun place to stop so things like goliath beetles wow which are i love some of these the biggest insects in the world so the heaviest and the, the most dense This trawl is one of my favourites. Oh, so wow. we've got Hermiptera here, so things like Picasso bugs and all sorts of little Scutellaria and really just lovely iridescent, super shiny tropical uh, Hermiptera char. I think, I think with this bug, back in the day, like in ancient times, there's a page that I follow and they go through different styles of makeup and how they use natural resources to create makeup. Yeah, absolutely. So one of them was said that they grind up these beetle juice, what, these yeah, beetle juice wings. Yeah, they found yeah quite a few different uh, yeah pigments they'd use from grinding up different kinds of insects to yeah get those colors out of them or to, um, you saw it in clothes as well, they'd harvest the, um, the elytra, so the hard outer shell bits they'd take those off because obviously it's just loads of really nice patterns and colors and then yeah. they'd sew them into clothes or they'd yeah grind them up into a finer powder and things like that These are Christmas beetles, um, which I love <laughs> and are very lovely, um, but just ridiculously old and sort of the, the starting point of the entomology collection here. Um, so it's about 12,000 specimens that sort of was that, that original group that we bought um, and then sort of came to the museum in the mid 1800s. Some are really, really good at camouflage, um, and these are some of my favourites for that because they're like stick insects, wow. but they're like giant walking leaves instead. Yeah, yeah. And you just get really lovely colours and shapes because if you're looking like a dead leaf, things are going to leave you be. Yeah. Um, most of the time. That's amazing. Ridiculous, aren't they? Thank you it so is, much. It's very fast, but it's there's a lot. It's yeah, lots but you're gonna be here, you'd be here for years. Absolutely, <laughs> if only. Hi, I'm Young Chin Breslin, and today I'm gonna be doing a creative makeup look based off of the insects that I saw. I'm gonna start by blocking out the brows, just so I've got a clean canvas to work with. Today I'm going to be doing this mask look because one thing I found really interesting when we were looking at the insects is how bees and wasps actually identify each other by their facial features and that's how they recognise each other and that's how they see if there's an intruder that's went into their nest and I thought that, that was something like quite mind-blowing because they're so tiny. So I wanted to do this sort of masked insect look, really symmetry based because that's something that I noticed about almost all of the insects. They were very symmetrical and um, they almost look quite robotic as well. I mean, the way that they work, it's like they are robots as well. They're very good at what they do and they work in a very sort of systematic order. So there are the main inspirations behind my makeup look. So now that I've got all the outlines on, I'm going to go in and start to add the colour. So what I like to do is work with the lighter colours first. I'm using some aqua paints today, 
which I don't actually usually use for these types of looks. I usually use a cream base and then build with powder and colour. But I'm going to try something new and I wanted to try with these aqua colours because I'm also going to add glitters on top and I find that maybe the fluorescentness of the glitters are going to stand out more so with the aqua paint. So I'm just carving out along those white lines my green and what I like to do is do all areas of the green first give it a light powder and then move on to the next colour I find that this way you get a cleaner finish and it also allows you to work quite systematically through the makeup look And I always work from dark to light so in these areas to going out towards the hairline I'm gonna add a darker shade of green almost finished doing the green base but one tip that I really love to do is to drag the hair out onto the face this is another reason why I'm using watercolour paint because cream and grease paint tends to be really difficult and it will stain your hair sometimes so um, using water base to just drag the look out I just feel like it really makes a difference in the transformation like definitely blend right into the hairline because these are the bits that just elevate the look and they make it look more complete and a lot more finesse. So now that I've laid down my green base, I'm just going to go in with a sparkly green and just highlight a few areas of that lighter green. So here on the cheeks, up there on the temple, and this is just to really mimic that sheer fluorescent colours on the beetles and some of the insects. I really want this look to look very shiny, very pigmented to sort of reference back how they used to use beetles wings to create certain pigments and makeup so I think there's quite a strong link there that I definitely want this look to bring out so not everywhere I don't want to lose the detail but if you just see when I move my head around that just brings it out a little bit and gives another level of dimension Now that I've got the green shimmery base on, I am going to go in and start doing the blues and purple areas. So again, starting with the lightest colour, so in this light blue, I'm just going to start cutting out and just filling in the shapes. Once I get up to the top here, it's going to go into these more deep purple colours. Now that I've laid down the blue and purple, I'm going to take my shimmering colours and like a really light glitter blue and pat that on top of this lighter blue. And with this, we're going to do it all over. I want this all to be super fluorescent. So just patting that on so it's completely coated. And then I'm going to go in with a more lilac colour of glitter just to make it even more fluorescent and really take it to another level. So now I am just finishing off the final details of filling in these blank areas with gold including the ears. And then any other areas, I'm going to be filling them in with black. And that should tie the entire mask together. So this is my final look inspired by the bugs and insects from the National Museum of Scotland. 
I hope you like watching me do it and picked up a few things from the process. I absolutely loved creating it and I hope you feel inspired to do the same. Bye.